Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Orbital Takes. Today is June 29th. Holy shit, time is flying by, Pat. What's up? What did you mean by that uh, text you sent me about Blue Origin, Pat? What was that about? Uh, how's it going? How's it going, Chris? <laughs> Good to see you, man. Good to see you too, Pat. How Good you to doing? see you, man. Uh, I sent you a text, uh, step by step, ferociously. It's how we're building our podcast. Yeah, it's right. also Blue Origin's motto. Oh, really? I was, yeah. I, okay, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, uh, the name of the uh, or the the Latin name is Greta Tim Ferocitir. Mm-hmm. I'm probably not saying that right, but uh, yeah, that means step by step, ferociously in Latin. And that's how we're building our podcast. A hundred percent, baby. For, but ferociously. You know, we wish we could share the numbers with you guys, but we're happy to say last episode numbers are up, baby. Numbers, numbers are, are up, up big time. We're gonna. Let's we're just go. gonna casually say. We'll casually say what yeah, nine, ten million. Or right, we don't want to give you guys too many uh, realistic numbers. Whoa, here. We're yeah, gonna keep, keep that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Keep keep those numbers confidential. But uh, other than that, yeah, we're both red out in the sun all day, but we're linking up. Orbital Takes Episode 7. We're going to hit it hard today. We got a big capstone launch that just happened. Uh, was this yesterday or this morning? Uh, this morning. Yeah. yeah. Early this morning. Yes. Yeah, so early this morning, NASA launched Capstone, which is basically going to pave the way for our Lunar Orbit Gateway Station. You know, it's been a long time since the boys went back to the moon and we're sending this little cube satellite up there to get some data, send it back so we can better understand the best path to take. Is this the official start to the Artemis program or would you say that it's already started? I would say it's already started. I would say exploration flight tests uh, of the Orion capsule was the, really the start of the Artemis program. Mm-hmm. Uh, it started the actual hardware, but all this stuff, you know, uh, we, th- this hardware was planned years in advance. Uh, the uh, the mission architecture um, uh, and strategy has kind of changed several times throughout the last decade. So, mm-hmm. you know, this is really uh, uh, the first test of the that kind of architecture, right? Mm-hmm. Um, by... Uh, by launching this this small CubeSat kind of, I guess it's not really a CubeSat, but it's a smaller satellite uh, from from Rocket Lab. Um, so so yeah, I mean you're you're sort of right. It's it's the it's the real start of like the Artemis program. Uh, I guess I just contradicted myself there. <laughs> it, so it, 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 you're right though. It's like it's it has an aspect of a CubeSat, which is like a small cube satellite that like kids make in school. I mean, the, the reason why people make them is because they're easy to make. They're small. You could add a ton of them on a rocket. And this one specifically is like it's crazy to think that this capstone is only like the size of a microwave, but it was sitting on top of this electron rocket that needed mm-hmm. to get it into space. Right? That's mm-hmm. nuts. Yeah, you know, Rocket Lab is uh, is doing some work here. Uh, uh, they're able to get these smaller. They're kind of you know specializing in these smaller payloads uh, that are you know a uh, Falcon Nine would take you know multiple of these uh, payloads. And so if you don't have multiple, you know, what's your next cheapest option? And it seems to be Rocket Lab. No. Um, so you know, uh, it, it's funny. You know, Rocket Lab they they name their missions uh, very clever things, right? They name them. You know, my favorite, my personal favorite is um, there and back again. A rocket's tail, which uh, you know, kind of harkens back to there and back again. A Hobbit's tail, because uh, Rocket Lab is based out of New Zealand, where the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and all that stuff was was shot. Um, there's also a, 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 I love one. Uh, another one leaves the crust. Uh, <laughs> that's that's another one. great one. Uh, so it's super clever. Have they how they uh, uh, name these things? Love it first insight. You know, that's a good uh, one. Uh, and then uh, this most recent one was just Capstone. Yeah, why'd they do that? I don't know. I, I don't know why they couldn't have found some, uh, you know, uh, clever name uh, to to go along with it. Kind of disappointing, Rocket Lab. Like, come yeah. on, keep, you have a good thing. You have a good little shtick going there, and and keep it going. If you had a, to name a, a mission, so what 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 would you think? Going back, and you know, we spoke about this. We were laughing at some names behind the scenes. I thought it was really cool in 2018. Uh, So the first mission was called it's a test. And then the next one was called (laughs) still testing. And then the following one was uh, it's business time. So that was like a a fun uh, little like story that they did there. And then in 2019, I thought they had their best year where one of the missions was called that's a funny looking cactus. Then they went to make it rain. And then they paid homage to the 2010 spring break anthem by Waka Flocka saying, look, ma, no hands on one of them. And I was like, damn, that's bringing me back to 2010. You know, look, ma, no hands, ain't no dollar. I don't dance. That was my shit back in the day, but I thought those were some funny names. I think it's great that they do like slogans for each launch. You're right. It's, yeah. it's funny that they just named this one capstone, maybe because that's all capstone needs though. And if 
So Maybe. capstone stands for this. It has the most ridiculous name ever. So it's Cislunar Autonomous Positioning System Technology Operations Navigation Experiment. So I'm That's just going to let's just keep it capstone. Like I like that. Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. I also liked uh, they they go up so fast. Yeah, I like that. That was a rideshare one they did. Yeah. yeah. The Rocket yeah. Lab CEO is the man. And I, you actually told me about the time he ate his hat, which actually yeah. happened. And he took a sip out of that. So I got yeah. respect for him. Yeah. He, uh, Rocket Lab, uh, they, you know, their current rocket architecture is all expendable. Uh, but they realize, you know, if they uh, become reusable, they can save money. Like, you know, everyone, everyone knows. And so he, but at the time he said, you know, if he, they ever go reusable, I'll eat my hat. And then here they are developing a reusable rocket, uh, yeah. uh, referencing the launch that I talked about just a few yeah. minutes ago, uh, there and back again. And so, yeah, he put his hat in a blender and he uh, uh, he ate some of it. So, yeah. so good, good, good for Peter Beck. Rocket Lab is going to be such a sick company in the future. I mean, they're already yeah. doing like really big things now, but I love the whole presentation of their company. Like their yeah. branding Agreed. is on point. I love their the rockets black. look sick. So sick. Yeah. yeah. So wait, yeah. what's that big, massive rocket that they have at Rocket Lab over that we're looking forward to again? It's like the um, it's not fully done yet, is it? It's a uh, neutron. Neutron. Yeah, rocket. neutron. Because right now it's electron uh, yeah. and neutron is going to be the at least part of it will be a, a reusable. Uh, they're catching sick. it with a with a damn helicopter like it's badass, <laughs> it's badass. yeah oh, that's the one that they just caught with the helicopter and we yeah. spoke about that yeah well, i remember yeah. that now yeah yep. yeah, yeah. That, that's gonna be crazy so yeah shout out rocket lab we, we have a uh, great things to say about rocket lab that's probably one of the only companies we haven't talked shit about yet have we i don't think yeah, we have. I, I don't think we have i don't think oh, we you know we talked yeah. a lot of smack in a lot of different nations and companies but rocket lab you guys are doing great keep up the keep great. up the good work rocket lab <laughs> Keep up the great work. While we're talking about the uh, the moon and kind of that lunar gateway, let's talk about some viral news that just blew up yesterday. So apparently scientists have found a double crater on the moon after a mysterious rocket impact. They don't know whose rocket it was as of right now. Um, it's a double crater, double rainbow, As I, if I mm -hmm. must. Uh, does that date us if well. I make that double <laughs> rainbow joke? Does that like really show my age here, how fucking old we are? I mean, is kids kids these days have kids to these know Kids these days are not going to know what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, double well, rainbow, man, the double yeah. rainbow Dude, bro. That was like OG yeah. YouTube. That was one of the first. The I feel like that was one of the first vi truly viral videos. Yeah, that and chocolate yeah. rain. That guy too. Oh, yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, all right. Double Probably bit gotta, my finger. Gotta, yeah. Oh, Charlie. That that girl or is it a guy? That, it's a, it's like, a little, yeah, yeah. They're like twenty now. <laughs> yeah, they're like, like twenty five. They're like, yeah, that was a great <laughs> video I posted back in the day with my mom. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so yeah, every now and then, you know, actually more than before, these topics of like mysterious uh, photos on Mars, mysterious photos on the Moon pop up more and more these days. But this isn't a mystery as like something's playing with our eyes, like you know, like this isn't as if we're trying to figure out if it's real or not. No, these mm -hmm. craters are mm -hmm. there and we're actually seeing them. The problem here is we don't know who they're from. We thought it was from a SpaceX rocket in 2015. They debunked that. Then we thought it was China. Then the mm -hmm. minister of China is like, no, it's not us. So now it's like, okay, whose rocket impact is this? What do you, what do you think about this? Uh, you know, I, there's so much space chunk up there uh, going back to the Apollo days. I don't think this is really that surprising. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, 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 it's cool that we found another crater on the moon, obviously, uh, for uh, studying purposes. And, you know, uh, I'm sure they can learn something about the ejecta um, and, and all that. But uh, I don't know. To me, this is kind of a non-story. Um, uh, that's that's. That's my orbital take. What do, Wait, what do you not, think? Not to sound like a middle score. You said ejecta. What do you mean by that? E ejecta? Yeah, what's that? <laughs> ejecta is the what comes out of the crater when something impacts uh, it. Everything that, that spreads out ejecta, it's called the ejecta blanket. Is that what it's called? Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, All right. Learn something new. In Apollo, in Apollo 13, they're circling the, the moon and Kevin Bacon goes, oh, I can't believe how bright the ejecta blanket is. Oh, he really and said I thought, that? I thought it was a made up term, but it's not. Well, now, Pat, so the big issue here is that they are looking deeper into these craters, and it's actually a double crater, which means whatever object landed in this crater had masses on both ends, they're saying. Mm -hmm. So when they when we used the Saturn V rockets back in the day for Apollo 13, 14, 15, and 17, those missions created impacts on the moon, but none of these resulted in like a double circular crater. So mm -hmm. it's kind of this mystery where it's like, is China just fucking lying to us? Or is, is maybe Russia get near the moon and they 
dropped a double, like a, a massive rocket with two massive ends. I mean, it really is a mystery here. That's kind of confusing considering the moon isn't that far away, but I do know that nations don't really monitor space junk that far out. Your final thoughts, whose rocket is this on? Uh, uh, well, ours, China would China? never, China would never lie to us, right? <laughs> never, never, Pat. never. That's ridiculous for you to say. I feel I know, insulted. I'm, I'm sorry, Chairman Xi Jinping. <laughs> apologies yeah yeah all right well all right we'll get we'll, we'll we'll keep uh so we'll keep following that story for, look it's, it's obviously not that big of a deal but at the end of the day we kind of do want to know who's throwing rockets into the moon for either testing purposes or whatever i mean eventually people are going to be there you don't want just rockets falling down right right right, Shit. right all right so pat why don't you uh close this out here and talk about the latest uh with the mega rocket space launch system and a little bit of starship what we got going on there yeah so sls was rolled back to the pad uh they're targeting um like we said last week, either the Labor Day or late September launch window. So I think you and I are right on. You know, what do we tell you guys? What do we tell you guys? We pinpoint accuracy pinpoint here at Over the Takes. Pinpoint accuracy. They really just need to ask us what yeah. what the deal is. Like, hey, hey, uh, Orbital Takes. When should we launch? You, and you, we'll. Yeah. I don't know. We'll get back to you. We'll yep. Get back to yep. you. you guys are experts at this point. Yeah. yeah. So that's a big, that's obviously a big step forward. Um, yeah. You know, there's some, uh, some hydrogen stuff that they have to, to work through with the quick disconnect that like, uh, it's the last thing that uh, is attached to the rocket before it actually mm -hmm. leaves the pad. Right. It's like a, it's a, something that disconnects quickly. That's why mm -hmm. they call it the quick, the quick disconnect. So there's some issues around that, that they're working through. Um, and then uh, down in Boca Chica, uh, Starship, uh, the booster, uh, booster seven was just casually lifted with its chopsticks onto the orbital pad. And, it, yeah. and, uh, and so, you know, a uh, question I posed to you, Spo is, uh, is this already boring? Uh, you know, the chopsticks, like we've seen them lift, you know, uh, several times now, like yada, yada, yeah. yada, you know, SpaceX makes, you know, landing on drone ships, you know, mm -hmm. droning on and on, blah, blah, blah. You know, is this mm -hmm. already boring? Yeah. You know, it, that's a great question you have. Cause we're two massive space fans, right? And even for me at this point, when I just read like, oh, static fire complete. Okay. So like I see a couple photos, you know, you watch the video. It's really not the like an electric factory, right? I think you're right. I think it does get boring. And I think we need that orbital test. It's been a full year has no it's been almost a full year since our, the last starship test we need to see something move we need to see something move it's it's time and i know look you're gonna have the spacex super fans that are gonna be involved no matter what the entire time you know watching the status static fires and shit but at the end of the day it's about getting the general public involved too and they gotta they gotta go orbital man and luckily it's gonna happen soon but i i do think it's getting boring what do you think yeah uh i don't think it's boring yet um, I think that um, we are uh, very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very fortunate to have a company like SpaceX that makes this, these amazing accomplishments mm -hmm. mundane. Yeah. Um, five years ago, could you have imagined like landing on a grown ship, just constantly being able to- Back to back to um, back. Yeah. yeah. And just like, oh yeah, like- it's now it's a big deal if they don't land it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like, well, what's wrong? Why didn't they land it? Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, we've, you know, we've talked about this before with the blue origin, new shepherd flights. Uh, those are become kind of commonplace and mundane. Mm -hmm. So chopsticks, not yet because we still get to see the chopsticks, uh, catch one of these massive rockets. So that'll be cool to see. Nice. Um, but like, do you remember a couple months ago when we first saw, uh, saw it lift starship and we're like, Oh, everyone's freaking out. Like, Holy yeah. crap. Look at this yeah. thing. And now it's just like, well, yeah, I mean, that's how else would you get it up yeah. there? There was, a, <laughs> there was a couple of moments along the way that I thought like brought some energy back into it. I thought that when Starship added the heat tiles with the black heat tiles, that was like, oh shit, they got heat tiles on it now. You know, we're moving here. I thought mm -hmm. that was really sick. And then, you know, obviously all the tests they did. And then when uh, the everyday astronaut went in there, I, and then like saw the full facility, I thought that brought some life back into it mm -hmm. too, but we just need more energy, not more. I, I guess, yeah, more energy from out of there. We need more, I think more like traditional media covering, um, Boca Chica as well. I don't think there's enough traditional media there to see it like on the everyday news, like Fox five, CNN, whatever you yeah. prefer to watch. Like, I don't think the traditional media is really tapped into Boca Chica yet. Uh, yeah, I agree, but I don't think that they will until there's a real flight. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think we saw it, uh, when, uh, what SN 15 launched mm -hmm. and landed uh, successfully, you know, there's a good amount of, of, uh, publicity there, but you know, 
the general public is not plugged in like like we are. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, but I love the meme that you sent me. It's like Rocket does absolutely nothing, and space fans are like, whoa, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, we're going nuts. Yeah, and yeah, like it, we saw this booster raised to this this table, his large table, and everyone's yeah, like, yeah. "Whoa!" Yeah, it hasn't even been static fired yet. Yeah, well, uh, that's just that's just the way it is these days. Like, I don't think anybody else on the face of this earth is like really excited about the capstone launch. Besides people like us and who's ever right. listening right now, shout out yeah. to our listeners. But that's why we're trying to make it exciting for you guys because it's like capstone is paving the way for our orbit yeah. like when are when we're potentially in orbit and like going to the to the gateway station before we go to the moon and before mm-hmm. we go to mars before we go out to the outer solar system like capstone is literally paving the way for us and not not just literally figuratively as well which is really yeah. cool yep yeah so there you have it so those are the three stories this week so we had the capstone launch we had the double crater on the moon and then we just got some updates from pat about starship and sls and that's all we got for orbital takes today once again thank you guys for tuning in we really love you guys follow us on instagram twitter uh what else we got what other social media accounts you're working on our tiktok yeah yeah throw, don't forget don't gosh, sleep on the tiktok bro throw us a like and a follow on tiktok all right we're working our asses off we're starting that we're only on episode seven all right we're gonna get up to all episode 100 it's gonna be great and uh thank you guys for coming along for the ride we really appreciate it uh would love for you guys to throw us a uh a rating on either spotify yeah, or apple music that. that's gonna help us out big time so yeah. uh thanks for listening everybody in that astra that astra baby peace